everyone, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. Um, I wanted to just kind of pull some cards, um, just for the heck of it. I don't know if any of you guys have this deck. This is the Gaian Tarot. I picked this one up at Barnes & Noble the other day. It looked really interesting, and I've seen a couple of followers that I have um, using this deck, and I was really, you know, I'm looking for tarot decks that are not right away. I think I mentioned it before that I'm trying to steer clear for now of the beautiful, beloved Rider Waite deck because I get so locked into that deck that I forget about all of the other cards that I have, all of the other tarot decks that I have, I, and they don't get any love. So I've been doing a really, really good job at that for this whole month. Um, I guess you could call that one of my um, New Year's resolutions or whatever you want to call it, to put more love and attention to other tarot decks that are not right away. Because you know I am obsessed with right away decks. That's all I was really using last year. Every once in a while I would pull a different deck, but it was always right away. And I really wanted to get away from that comfort zone because there's so many beautiful tarot decks that I own and that um, that are out there that I feel like I could grow to love even more um, and use even more um, and not just that one. So. <laughs> so the Guy in Tarot is one that I bought and it's huge, you guys. Like, look at how big. The cards are beautiful. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with the artwork. I think that there's some, there's some imagery that I'm just not vibing with, and I think it has to do with like the real, <laughs> the faces. But you know, I'm not oppo opposed to that. I think that I could still make this work. Um, I would still use it, in other words. But the cards themselves are huge. And I was thinking, you know what, I think I'm gonna trim this one and cut the borders off, but then I realized that it's silver edges and I really don't wanna fuck with that, so I think I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> it's a big deck though, but I know with time, it will um, become easier to handle. But big decks like this, we could just shuffle it sideways and then that should be good. So let me move this down just as much as it'll go. I should have I should have moved the phone sideways, but <laughs> but we'll just do that. So we'll move this down, and then um, let's do just like a quick a quick little reading with this deck because um, I don't know if you guys know this, but whenever I get a brand new deck, I have to read for myself first <clears throat> before I use it on anyone else. And I got this one, like I said, yesterday or the day before. No, the day before yesterday. Um, and I want to be able to use it for clients, but I need to read for myself. <laughs> so I figured, you know what? I may as well make a video of me doing this so that um, <clears throat> I can have something, some new content to put on my YouTube. So we'll just do that. See, once you start shuffling it, it's actually really easy. The cards are freaking huge, but. If you shuffle sideways with a big deck like this, it's so much easier to handle. So <laughs> that's nice. That works. Okay, I'm gonna see if there's a spread in the book. The guidebook is beautiful, it's huge. Let's see, this is the guidebook, by the way. <laughs> the Guy in Tarot. I picked this one up at Barnes and Noble. Oh, and it's in color. Ooh, they never do guidebooks like this in color, not as often. Okay, let's see if there are any spreads. Yes, there are, okay. Seeking clarity spread. Uh, predict your future by creating it spread. Ooh, let's do that one. <laughs> let's do that one, okay. So, like I said, I have to read for myself with my own deck first before I read for clients, so that's what we're doing. This is the um, Beth Owl's Daughters Predict Your Future by Creating It Spread, okay? And it is six cards. Um, 
Oh, she separates the majors from the minors. Oh. Oh, well, well we're not going to do that. <laughs> because I don't want to, um, I don't want, I just shuffled all the cards, so I don't want to go through finding all the majors. So we're just going to pull them like regular. But I guess she has a specific, like, which ones are going to be the, supposed to be major arcana and whatnot. But we don't care. We don't care because we don't have to follow rules when we're reading tarot because we just do it how we feel. So I'm gonna just pull the, the six cards before I even look at the book. And one more shuffle. Whoa. All right. So number one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I know you guys can't see it, but <laughs> let's, let's see, maybe that'll help. Okay, number one, um, where you are today. So where am I today? Number one, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got Gaia the world. Look at that card. So where am I today with the world? Um, freaking having it. I'm owning it. So that's where I'm at right now. Seriously. Um, so as far as like my personal life goes, been through a lot, <laughs> been through a lot just this first month of the year. Um, but I feel like that the world card popping up is kind of showing me, Hey, you got this, you have control. You were in control and you were in the driver's seat Rose, So you could do this. So I feel like the world card is popping out at me, telling me, I got a handle on things. I have a lot of experience. I just need to start really working and focusing with it more. Um, I'm really comforted with the fact that she's like holding the moon. I mean the moon. It looks like the moon, but it's not. The world. She's holding the world as if she's cradling it and nurturing it. So I feel like it's saying, Rose, you know, embrace your hardships, but also embrace the fact that you are in full control of your life right now in the moment. So that's number one. Number two, what challenges me? <laughs> guardian of the air. Now, I don't know if guardian is, that might be the queen of, of swords or the queen of air. Let's just take a peek. <laughs> so we have the two, three. I don't want to read the definition of it because I want to do it this intuitively, but I want to see what, well, where are the courts? I want to see what a guardian is. Child, explorer, which would be the, the knight, the guardian, and the elder. Okay, so the guardian is the queen. So I was right. <laughs> so queen of air, queen of swords. Guardian of air is my challenge, which is pretty freaking on point. Um, I do have a challenge with really like owning a lot of my ideas which air is all about your your um your mind your ideas your inspirations as well as communication i feel like i could communicate perfectly but when it comes to me um making something out of my ideas that's really hard for me i don't know why i struggle with that so hard, so much um it's always hard for me to pull from my ideas and actually make it a reality. So the queen of air, I feel, is tapping into that. I also feel like a queen of air is she owns herself. She owns everything that she does. She's straightforward. She tells it like it is. She sets her own rules and she doesn't care if other people don't align with it or not, if other people are upset. Um, if she says something that you know offends somebody, I feel like... Um, I do struggle with that as well. <clears throat> a queen of swords is the ultimate court card that I struggle with the most. So very interesting as a challenge to come up as a challenge. Okay, where's my spread? <laughs> Number three, um, what action you can take to meet the challenge? So what can I take to meet the challenge of a queen of swords? Seven of fire or seven of wands. It's the cards are just telling me you just do it. You have the role, you have the, the willpower, you you play the role well. 
you do it, you go for it, you work hard, you build it, and you don't stop. So I love that because you have this power woman who is hitting on that iron right there, you can see, um, working really hard and is focused. So I feel like um, the seven of fire is telling me to be focused and to fight the obstacles or the challenges that you face. Um, because typically the seven of wands in the tarot is um, all about, you know, um, stepping up to the plate and battling all of the obstacles or, or, you know, that come forward. So you just have to go for it. You just got to dive in and fight. Don't be so scared, Rose. Number four, um, the next step, six of air. I love it. Or six of swords. This is about finding peace. Um, reaching out. I feel like this is faith. I feel like this is, you know, looking to your higher guidance, um, whether you believe in, you know, if you, if you believe in God or you believe in, you know, your guides or your angels or whoever it is that you turn to for help seeking that assistance. So, um, you know, that could be that. I also see this as just being in peace and aiming forward because everybody is facing forward in this card. Sorry for the glare. <laughs> Everybody's facing forward. Like they are waiting for the next best thing to happen. Like they are waiting for that moment to shine, for that sun to rise, for that brand new day. So I feel like this is also saying, even though I'm going to be putting hard work into becoming that queen of air um, and to battle that challenge that I have with the queen of air, you know, putting my ideas to reality, I got to just put it, I just got to do it work hard and be focused, but also um, be hopeful, have faith in my own, in myself that I have the ability to make these amazing things happen and not worry about what other people are going to think. That's also a big one too. Number five, how does mystery help you? Guardian of earth. So that is the queen. It would be the queen, I guess, the queen of earth. How does mystery help me? I don't understand the mystery part. Let's see. The spread doesn't really, it doesn't really explain mystery, but how would it help me though? Well, for one, being grounded and two, nurturing everything as it, as it is, as if it were my baby. So taking care of everything and having more respect for myself. I feel like, um, I feel like one of the reasons why I doubt the dreams, the ideas, the inspirations that I get, but actually putting them into work. Um, I feel like the, one of the reasons why I don't do it is because I doubt myself a lot. And I feel like, I think like, <laughs> like it's automatically going to fail or people aren't going to like it or I'm not going to have the time or the energy to keep up with it. I, I start thinking long term before it even happens. So I feel like the queen of earth is kind of saying you got to you got to water your seeds for them to grow. You guys kind of see you kind of see that. <laughs> and then the last one, um, the outcome or where do I want to be? And we have... Oh, the wheel full circle it's a 10 card so this is all the wheel of fortune so I feel like where do I want to be full circle meeting my goals you know coming full circle with my path and with my journey what a beautiful card to receive after getting the world <laughs> I love it and, and I love this deck so now that I've like now that I've read for myself with this um I have a better understanding of um these cards so not just face value not just looking at eh, I don't really like some of the <laughs> some of the faces but um, I think if I could look beyond that I think this would be a really cool deck to work with and read for clients so I'm excited I'm glad that I read for it and if anyone is wondering this is the Gaian tarot this is the backs of the cards so really pretty they are laminated so they have like a gloss to them, as you can see, but beautiful. So they're, and they're very large, but those are the backs. And then the cards themselves have a lot of the artwork um, with people's faces. So if you are not, um, if you are not, you know, a fan of that, you may not like this deck. 
Um, but the cool thing about it is there's a multiple, um, a wide range of just different types of people you have. You don't just have a bunch of, you know, white people in the cards. You have, you know, a variety. And then there's animals too. So you have beautiful animals and you have... Ooh, you get you have a little bit of nudity in some of the cards not too much this one looks that one reminds me of me <laughs> um let's see and you know i've noticed some of the artwork like this looks like it's an actual photo where this one obviously looks like it's drawn so there is a blend of the two. So you have some actual photos and then you have some that are like, it's, it's pure artwork. What else can I see? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, now that I look at it, I don't think that the faces are gonna really throw me off. Um, I think it'll, it'll be doable. I think that the, the cool part about this deck is that there's so many <clears throat> so many different people and stuff in it. it it's kind of like you have the whole wide range of world um here's like an actual photo of an animal so you kind of have a blend of the two it's a different type of a deck but i actually like it um i think it'll be one that i'll enjoy to, to read with with clients so i just wanted to share that with you guys here's what the box looks like the guy in tarot picked this one up at Barnes and Noble, so it's available there. Um, and yeah, thanks you guys for watching.